Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us here today on TIP International Radio. I'm your host, Leah Mastin. We're showcasing prestigious top professionals from all industries all over the globe to share their experience and stories of success. We have a very special guest joining us today who is a world-renowned paleontologist, research professor, author, and sought-after lecturer. He is known for his empirical research documenting the evolutionary process of punctuated equilibrium in the fossil record. He is a paleontologist and research professor for the University of Hawaii at Manau and was just recently honored at the International Association of Top Professionals, IAOTP Annual Awards Gala at the Bellagio Hotel for his selection as Top Research Professor of the Year and received the Lifetime Achievement Award. Everyone, please welcome Dr. Stephen Stanley. Hi, Dr. Stanley. Thanks for joining us today. Nice to be with you. We're really honored having you on the show today. So, Dr. Stanley, you have over 40 years of experience as a seasoned and trusted American paleontologist and evolutionary biologist. Tell me, what first got you started in the industry? Was this always a field you were interested in? Um, no, it wasn't actually. As a kid, I collected minerals. I thought fossils were sort of old dead things. I saw them in the museum in Cleveland in drawers, They're kind of musty and dusty. Uh, but I got interested in geology, also like biology, and paleontology is a combination of the two. But when I got to Princeton, I took a biology course, a beginning biology course my sophomore year. And the theme of the course was evolution. The professor was named Pittendry. He was a very famous lecturer all over the campus. He was a very inspiring lecturer. And um, I really got excited about evolution, and that's what got me in the paleontology. I took a paleontology course at the same time with Al Fisher, who became my lifelong friend. <laughs> Wonderful, brilliant man. And he brought fossils to life also. Oh, wow. But it was really that, that evolution, the evolution of that course that got me concerned. Set you on your path. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. um, what has been your biggest obstacle that you've had to face, whether in your current position or prior to your position, in order to pursue your goals? Well, it hasn't been a problem so much in my current position as a professor, but school was very hard for me. I, I actually hated school. I loved this, the boys' school I went to and loved Princeton. But mm -hmm. I, I, um, I learned at the age of 46, I have attention deficit disorder. And okay. the whole time I was, had to struggle through school. I, I, I had to work extremely hard to do well. Mm -hmm. And I had problems along the way, but I managed to, to make my way. Once I got into, uh, that farther along, and what mattered was analytical thinking and creativity and figuring things out, then I was fine. But mm -hmm. memorization tests were awful for me. So <laughs> that was my biggest obstacle. I, it's, yeah, that that's, can be a challenge for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, and what would be some advice you would give to someone starting out in your industry? Well, I think the most important thing is to, to have courage. Mm -hmm. Because um, there's some people who go to graduate school in science PhD program, and they really don't, they really um, are uncomfortable talking about their, their research or, or writing it up for people to read. They, some of them can't even write a dissertation. They just block. It mm -hmm. takes courage because you're going to be criticized yeah. when you write a, a paper, you write an article, you send off your manuscript, and you, it gets reviewed, and reviewers can be very negative, sometimes unfairly. Mm -hmm. You write a grant proposal, one, one negative comment can, can shoot you down. You, you have to have courage. Um, and that's what, you can't control your basic intelligence or, or your creativity in many ways, but you can perhaps learn to be more, uh, more uh, self-confident and, and have courage. That's, that's, that's a block for, some, for many people. Have courage is definitely some great advice. Throughout your illustrious career, you have won numerous awards, honors, and featured in magazines worldwide. This past year, I have heard that you were honored at IAOTP's annual awards gala at the Bellagio Hotel for your selection as Top Research Professor of the Year and received their Lifetime Achievement Award, where you were featured on the famous Reuters Building in Times Square and were on the front cover of TIP Magazine. Congratulations, that is quite amazing. What would you say has been the highlight of your career or most memorable experience that you've had to date? Uh, well, I don't like to uh, to seem to downgrade other other uh, good things that have happened to me, other awards and other yeah. honors. But 
I think the most important, because it sort of set the stage for other things, is that I, I received the Penrose Medal of the Geologic Society of America, which is for eminence in pure research. And mm -hmm. it can go to any geoscience um, uh, researcher, any, anybody in the earth sciences. And they oh, do wow. it to one person every year. And I was the first paleontologist to receive it in 20 years. Oh, my goodness. So that was a, that was a, a major thing for me. Yeah, that's a huge honor. Um, when not working, I know you have some hobbies, but do you like to do for fun? Well, uh, I, uh, I'm an amateur landscape architect. Um, I probably also will begin to do some fishing. Um, I, I bought a small house on the Potomac. I have waterfront property. I have two acres go right down to the river in West oh, Virginia. Nice. Um, and um, I'll probably go down to <laughs> in front of my property and do some fishing. <laughs> yeah. But I also will do some landscaping there. And I also, I probably will do some sculpting. I, I've always been artistic, and, oh, and okay. I've done a little bit of sculpting with clay before. I'll probably begin to do that again, too. I'm basically a creative person. I'd love to, to so do Those are some nice out, outlets for you, too. Yeah. Yeah. Looking back, what would you say you attribute your success to? Well, I, it's hard not to brag because, if I'm honest, I, I have a very high IQ. Yeah. IQ and that's behind my ability to do what I've done. Right. But also, um, I'm, I am a creative person. I've always been a little kid. I would be, I would be uh, like like an architect designing houses, drawing, yeah. drawing pictures of of, of um, designs for houses, and I would be drawing things. I'd be building things uh, with tools. I've always been creative, mm -hmm. and what I do now is creative work. Right. But also, that the business of, of having courage. I, because I, I've introduced a lot of new ideas that have probably have upset people, and I've had to mm -hmm. I've had to tolerate a lot of abuse actually, and uh, I've had to have the, the strength to withstand it. Sometimes it makes me pretty kind of unhappy, but but I right. you know, it's just a matter of when you when you introduce new ideas, you upset people, and right. I've had to have the strength to to be willing to do that and to take the the consequences. Mm hmm. So creativity, courage. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Stanley. We are very honored to have you as a guest. Well, thank you for having me. And for more information on Dr. Stephen Stanley, you can visit the IEOTP.com website.